ASMR with Josh. Yes. This is Josh and Phil. <laughs> Guess what he's scratching. <laughs> Can you do the cup one again? Yes. <laughs> ASMR brought to you by Seven Slot Remodeling. <laughs> um, before we jump into the conversation, um, I'm going to have you do the introduction. Okay. So all you do is look right here at this camera and you say, hey, everybody, this is Josh from Seven Slot Remodeling, and this is Hey Bay City. Got all that? I can, <laughs> I can try to got all that. And you get as many takes as you want, so, so there's no pressure here. So whenever you... <laughs> right there. Hey, everybody, this is Josh with Seven Slot Remodeling, and this is Hey Bay City. <laughs> Nice. I like that? Yeah, I like that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> You're pretty cool. So, so Josh, um, I got a I got an email from your your very kind wife a couple months ago saying, "Hey, I'm married to a pretty cool guy. <laughs> you should do an interview on him." And and that's all this took. So, <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. So here we are. Okay. So note to the people at home that that's that's our bar for for stories. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I know this guy and he's pretty cool. He's pretty cool. He does stuff. Yeah, he does stuff. Well, she shared a little bit of your backstory, and I was really intrigued. And um, seven slot. You're currently working out of your home. Is that right? Um, yeah, we use the, we use the house basically as our shop. Yeah. Kind of like home base. And so yeah. I was intrigued by that and a little bit of your history. And so, um, first things first, did you grow up in Bay city or where'd you grow up? No, I'm actually from Southern California. Whoa. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's not Bay city. That's not Bay city. It's a little fur further away. Yeah. Uh, tell me about growing up. Um, yeah, I grew up in Southern California. Um, the area that I grew up in is kind of, I think most people, they have this like mindset of like California and how they don't like California or the people there, are, you know, snooty and this, that, and the other. Yeah. The area I grew up in is kind of, uh, I think outside of what people commonly think. Oh, really? Um, it's more along the lines of like Southern hospitality, people actually giving, giving a crap about each other, you know, taking care of each other. Mm. Um, it's a smaller beach community basically. Um, but it, I don't know. I think that I, I think that that community and the way the people are there, um, has a lot to do with who, how I am now, mm. and like some of my morals and ethics and things like that. So what city it's, uh, like Ventura County. Okay. So there's three big cities. There's, there's, there's Ventura there's Oxnard and Port Twainy, and that whole area is very agricultural. So, mm. like strawberry fields and cilantro fields, as far as the eye can see, kind of thing, and a uh, very Hispanic community. So, I was pretty much raised around hardworking people my whole life. Yeah. So it do, nice. it does kind of buck this <laughs> the stereotype of when you when you hear Southern California. Depending on who you are, you might think snooty. You might also might think like nothing but waves and surfing. Yeah, I mean, there's always that, but it, that's like your, you know, that's that's five percent of your time. You know, the other ninety five percent is the area is all hardworking. Yeah. yeah, is it expensive to live there? Yeah, but the people that live there work their butts off so that they can afford to live there, and it's the money's there and it's available. So right. They, it's just a constant, you know, hustle to, to, to grow and to work hard. And so, I don't know, it's, it's different. It's yeah. definitely different than I have found it to be here. Yeah. I la um, I laughed at myself a little bit when you said cilantro fields, <sighs> because you, like I had never really thought about that cilantro needs to be grown in a field. <laughs> yeah. Does cilantro taste like soap to you? <clears throat> no. No, no, but I, I can see how people can kind of take that yeah. and get it. I, that's like my favorite thing in the world. So we, we cook a lot and I cook a lot of Hispanic foods, like oh, cool. traditional stuff, like 
the real I, stuff. Yeah, like if I if I opened a restaurant here, I think I would be I'd do pretty good. I think honestly, oh, okay. because we cook like like real Mexicans do back home. Not like a Taco Bell chalupa. No, it's so <laughs> sad. Um, Everybody at home just gasped. But whenever I whenever we're like dicing up cilantro, and I mean the smell of it, it it's like an instant memory like take back to like. Early morning in my hometown, when you're like driving to work or something, mm. you get that like fresh ocean air mm -hmm. mixed with cilantro field, like cilantro, and it's it's amazing. It's interesting that you say that because I had I just interviewed uh, Eric. Sorry, Eric, I'm going to butcher your last name. Shev Shevchenko. Um, he owns uh, Preservation in Old Town Saginaw, and it's all fermented foods. And he also had, while well, he grew up here in, Bay, or in, in Saginaw, um, ended up over in California, had a rabbit farm where he supplied fine dining restaurants with rabbits. <laughs> um, and his family is Russian and he's big on food memories. And, that, and that's this kind of rabbit hole idea that he's pursuing right now is, is tapping into to food memories and everybody's like for you it's cilantro but for some yeah. like I, br I brought up the example with him um uh pears and cottage cheese like i remember okay. i remember sitting in the basement because my mom would can pears and all sorts of fruit and vegetables and my me and my brothers used to sit in the basement and um open up a can of pears and then put in mm -hmm. some cottage cheese and like not not the fanciest meal, but it but it's it connects you in a way that nothing else can. Yeah, I think uh, I can't remember what it's called. Um, the sense your your scent, the smell sense, is like directly connected to memories. So like if oh, you yeah. smell something, your your olfactory olfactory memory. You see there that you that word bomb at yeah. this job? Yeah, that's the teacher thing. I'm smart. <laughs> So you're growing up in SoCal. What was growing up in, in SoCal like from, from that point? Um, well, I, so, uh, I was, I was raised by a single mom and my mom left my dad when we were, I don't know, like 10, 11 ish, somewhere in there. Um, and we had nowhere to go. So we pretty much lived out of the back of a pickup truck for mm. like a year and a half. And I got to tell you, that was that's wild. I still to this day have a hard time eating certain foods because uh -huh. that's what it brings me to mentally. I'm like, yep, yeah, no, bad times, can't do that. You yeah, because you're always grabbing the double cheeseburger from McDonald's or whatever it might be. Yeah. It was uh, peanut butter and jelly. Oh, yeah. What a thing to ruin. Oh, right? yeah, dang. Like, I, no. No peanut butter and jelly. It's... Every once in a blue moon, I'm like, oh, yeah, that sounds all right. And then I, I'm, I'm eating it. And the whole time I'm eating it, I'm like. Oh, wow. Yeah. Was it just you and your mom? Yep. Yeah, it was just me and her. And then uh, we moved from uh, the area where my, my family lived, which is like uh, North Hollywood, Los Angeles, um, San Fernando Valley, which is extremely congested. If you've ever been there, you know. When they talk about smog, that's the smog. Oh. <laughs> oh. So um, moved from there to the Ventura County area, which is, it's only like 45 minutes, but I tell you, you know, that's like 25 cities away. Oh, you know, wow. it's, it's a heck of a, a drive there. And it was just far enough away from my dad and from previous life and everything else um, to start over. And that's what we did. And so... Um, yeah, I was raised in that area and by my mom and yeah, hard work, you know, single mom who actually <laughs> constantly tried to have her stuff together, you know, so that gave me a vision of like what it takes to succeed or to have drive and everything else. Right. But, um, yeah, you gotta, you gotta hustle and, and work hard in a, in a completely different way than. Like, like right now you use the like hustle culture in terms of entrepreneurship, but that's, that's, this is life Yeah, working hard. It's not like I, I want to start a side hustle so that I can make some money later on. This is so I can live and so support a family. Yeah, yeah. So I can eat food. Well, so that's how I am now. I, I, everything I do, I do with that mentality of like, 
I have to do this so I can eat. Yeah, <laughs> right. And I think that's what my what drives me. You know, because if it was if I if my mentality was anything less, I think I wouldn't be as good as I am at anything I do. Yeah, there, so. there's um there's a lot to be said I think for pursuing passions and um like whether it's in business or or whatnot, but um. I, th I think a lot has to be set out of necessity. Like you, you, yeah. you, you don't, it's, it's not a choice. It's not a, well, this makes me feel good. It's, I have to do this. Yeah. 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 That's how I am with everything. So you're growing up in Southern California. You go to high school in Southern California. Yep. I went to high school out there. Uh, I graduated high school and then I moved to Portland, Oregon for a year. It's really, uh, oh, really? chased a girl just, <laughs> Not my brightest moments in life, but um, still good memories because I've gotten to go different places and experience yeah. different things. What uh, was Portland like? I think it was amazing to this day. I, I think I think that um, quality of life out there, you know, in general, would was kind of. I've always thought it was it was you know some of the best quality of life experience that mm. you're gonna find. Um. It wasn't as rainy and cold as everybody <laughs> thinks. I got there. Everyone told me to be prepared for the yeah, rain and the yeah. cold. And then it was summertime and they don't have AC. And I didn't know what that was like. <laughs> so there you are sitting with a box fan and wet towels just uh -huh. trying to cool off. And it was not great. I was not prepared. All I had was like heavy jackets and stuff. And I'm like, why? Yeah. What did I do? <laughs> did but, you? So you... You moved away from Portland to so, where? So I moved from California. I went to Portland uh, for about a year. Felt I, I feel like I have this weird vagrant, you know, like story. And then I ended up moving back to California um, and I worked jobs. You know, I started selling cars when I lived in Portland and then I moved back to California and continued selling cars. And that was great. I love cars. I'm a gear nut. Uh-huh. Um, and, uh, and then at some point I was like, man, I don't know what I'm doing with myself. I'm going to join the military. That's a great idea. <sighs> Which it wasn't a bad idea, yeah. but it was, it was an idea. That's for sure. Right. Um, what made you pick the air force? Well, uh, so the area that I grew up in, there's a, there's a Navy base there. Um, it is a CB base, which is like the construction field of Navy. Okay. Right. So when okay. people think Navy, they think ships and blah, blah. Right. This is more like land building bases, construction mm. type stuff. Um, my mom worked, worked there. She reconditioned missiles, missile canisters mm. for like Tomahawk missiles and stuff. Maybe I was what, 20, 21 years old. Yeah. I'm like that's the way. Yeah. I'm going to do that. So. Joined the Air Force, and uh, yeah, it allowed me to pretty much become an adult, you know, in the true sense. Yeah. I think everybody should have, and I mean, it's kind of a weird way to look at it, but I think if everybody in the country at a certain age had to do like two years in the military mm -hmm. to like grow them, I don't think it would be an awful idea. But at the same time, it's... Yeah. How do you, how do you think... Why, why do you think it helped you grow in that way? Um, I think that it gives you a sense of self, like uh, awareness. It makes you realize that you're part of something. Mm. So, you know, if you take somebody who's, you know, all they've done is school or they they come from maybe a, a broken household like, like I did or, you know, whatever, they don't really have something, a sense of self, so like a drive or they're part of something or they don't have the family aspect. Uh, it, it gives them that. Mm -hmm. It shows them that it doesn't matter where you're from or, or who you are or what your background really is. This is a clean slate and you can do this. And it's a, it's a group of, you know, uh, of individuals that are going to constantly tell you that you can do this mm -hmm. instead of look down on you. They're going to give you the tools. They're going to push you. They're going to send you, you know, down the right path and then it's up to you. It sounds like it was 
uh, a combination of of connection to other people and kind of a greater purpose, but also an an empowering experience. Yeah, it um, it allowed me to go places, see other cultures, or be you know, and you need to think the military. There's people from everywhere, mm-hmm. all all these different cultures, all these different ethnicities. Everybody just we're gonna stick y'all in one room and you're gonna get along whether you like it or not. Right, <laughs> right, right. And it, I mean, it really teaches you to get along with people and to be a bigger person and how to, I don't know, how to adult the right way. Right, right. What What was your role in the Air Force? What did you do? Um, so what I did, what I still do, um, is I do command and control battle management. Explain what that is. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there's... There's a lot of different facets to it. Um, ultimately, what we do is we kind of like war game, but like not game. Oh, <laughs> but with like real people, <laughs> with real people and real, real stuff. things, yeah. real stuff. Um, it's kind of like strategic thinkers. You know, if you put a, a whole massive group of strategic thinkers in a room and you say, "Hey, this is the mission, and we need to accomplish this." Whatever the mission is, we need to go there and 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 level this base, level this field, remove this asset from what wherever, what country, you know. Mm-hmm. It's the group of people that figure out how to get you from A to B and all the logistics that go with it. And then all the things that come after it, all the post mm. things, you know, you know, how did we do? What could we have done better? Um, in that cycle. And so when you think of like a war aspect where it's like we've had a war going on for X amount of time, that cycle is constantly happening mm. every day. Wow. And it's constant learning and constant. So everything from intelligence aspects down to people hand thumping in a keyboard. Wow. So I kind of have a little bit of a, a know-how of all those things. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So... <laughs> So you're you're still serving in the Air Force, correct? Yeah. In what capacity? Um, I'm in the Air National Guard now. Okay. So uh, I've been in the Guard for like four years Okay. since we moved to, moved to Michigan. And um, I do the same job, only I do I go for four days every two months now, basically. Okay. So I get to grow a beard. Oh, no, nice. And Perks of the job. I shave, and then it sucks, and then I got to grow it back. <laughs> Yeah. My my uh <laughs> my, my wife and and our oldest daughter is constantly bugging me like just once shave the mustache off shave the beard off because they haven't seen me without it and and every time they say that like trust me you don't want to see what's under there <laughs> so I, I recently I recently did something I'm just gonna slide this to show you so okay. you can appreciate it yeah yeah um I had to get a new ID card okay show me okay <laughs> and oh. Almost. I'll get it. I'll get it. And I've always wanted to do this, and I've never been able to do it because I was always <laughs> active duty. But I took what I consider the perfect picture. This this is the perfect picture. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. I don't know. Yeah, it says um, it says something along the lines of I drive a van that says free ten millimeter sockets on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, and it doesn't even look like you. It doesn't. It's because I had a really big beard and I shaved it and all that was left. I just left that mustache. But it sits on my wallet like this. <laughs> so as a constant reminder, I have this this person that I don't really recognize staring at me like, hey bud, keep it together. <laughs> it's pretty pretty Keep topical. it together, man. So yeah. when did you how long were you in the Air Force the first time? Uh, I did, I was active duty for like 10 years, basically. Yeah. Okay. When did you start feeling like it's, it's time to get out? Uh, so I met, so I met my wife, um, in the military. Uh, we were stationed in Louisiana. Oh, was, wow. Yep. So, um. And what did she do? Same job. Same job. Yeah. I, uh. Who's the better command and controller? Uh, I am because <laughs> I still do it and she does not. Yeah, Molly. Just, just throwing it out there. Sorry. Honey. <laughs> um, no, I was her instructor. Basically. Uh, I was her trainer for her position 
And yeah, it, yeah, it just kind of grew into something. Oh, cool. So Aww, here we are. Oh, you guys. Yeah, pretty much. So you met in Louisiana. So we met in Louisiana and, um, <laughs> and then she ended her enlistment there and pretty much become like stay at home mom. And she started going crazy. Didn't know what to do with herself. <laughs> yeah, especially going from something intense like the military, and then I'm not saying stay at home mom. It's just a diff. It's a different yeah, life. It's completely different. Yeah. yeah, you get up, you go somewhere every day, and you have this this group of individuals, and you have a responsibility that is not at home. Yeah, you know, right. And then your responsibility changes to at home life, and it was interesting. Yeah, so, it's, it's a lifestyle change. Yeah. And then we started talking like, hey, you know, what are we going to do? Do we want, do I want to stay in? Do I not? You know, are we staying here? Are we not? Like, what are we going to, what are we going to do? You know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it kind of came down to, I did not want to, I didn't want to stay there. Um, and I didn't want to raise my kids there. They, you know, the military is like a family, but it's, it is, but it isn't. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a contrived family. It's a family, um, but at, in the long run, it's like we didn't issue you kids, mm. yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, we'll help you take care of them, but when push comes to shove, we did not issue you kids, and when we need you to go somewhere, we need you to go somewhere. That's mm -hmm. all there is to it. Or when we need you to work these hours, night shift, and then sw switch to day shift, and, the, you know, yep. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you, you can't say, "Hey, Air Force." Um, so I'm tr I'm working on a good home homework balance, yeah. and yeah. so I can only work between nine and three every day. Is that cool? Yeah. yeah. Negative. <laughs> do I really want to keep doing this? Uh, and if I do, do I want to do it in active duty? So I was like, you know what? Let's pull the plug. We're going to pull the plug, and we're going to move. Where do we want to move? And it was like, well, do we move to like? Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do I want to raise my kids in LA around that culture and that, you know, craziness? Or do we go to Bay City, which is where my wife is from? Mm. And her mom lives here and, you know, her family's all here and they, they're, they're really big in the community. And it's, uh, it was just like, all right, well, family makes more sense. I'd much rather raise my kids around a, a network of family. Yeah. So pull the plug and boom, moved to Bay City. Wow. What year was that? Um, 19, 2019. Okay. So you're, you're leaving the military, ending your enlistment, moving back to Bay City. Had you ever been to Bay City before? I only, point? I had just for visiting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like Christmas kind of thing. Hanging like, out yeah. for Christmas, yeah. Came, visit, and that was really it. Yeah, so you didn't really know know much about Bay City before you... Not decided. really. Yeah. No. So, yeah, so it was a complete learning opportunity for me. I mean, you know, the military sends you places, and you don't know where you're going or what you're yeah, doing, true. and I've just kind of... My whole life has been that way. I'm yeah. like... You show up, and you figure it out. Yep. Show up, and I figure it out. And people are like, oh, man, that must be a hard transition. Oh, how do you? I'm like, it's just another place. Yeah. Yeah, it gets cold here. Yeah. <laughs> it gets hot here, too. Yeah. Go figure. I've been in a couple other places yeah. that also get cold and hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't, Vegas gets cold and gets hot. Yeah. Wow. It's in the desert. Like, it's the same thing. It's just a different place. So, yeah. I don't know. When you left the Air Force, did you have an idea of employment or or, <laughs> or what you're gonna do after or, or tell me um, that um I've always had the ability to sell things. Uh I've mm. always been kind of a people person. I get along with people. Um yeah. selling cars early on. Yeah. Uh one thing that the Air Force definitely taught me how to do is how to um how to connect with people and how to uh, work with people that you wouldn't necessarily normally work with, I mm. guess, you know, yeah. there's people from everywhere. So, right. um, I kind of took that and I was like, yeah, well, I got here and I was like, I'll do what I know how to do. I'll go sell some cars, whatever. Um, I was like, you know what? I'm a Jeep nut. I always have been. Um, I've had a bunch of Jeeps throughout my life and I was like, I'm going to go sell Jeeps. That seems like my thing. I'm the Jeep guy. Everybody's always known me as the Jeep guy. And then I get to, uh, I worked over at Garber 
over on uh, Bay Road, which was awesome. I met a lot of really great people there. Um, but there was a, they had a Jeep guy and he's still there. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. Yeah. Um, and he, he, he's the Jeep guy. He's the, Jeep the local guy. Jeep guy. Right. So I was like, man, this is hard. This is a new <laughs> com- competition thing. This is a competitive field that I don't know how to, how to play in. Yeah. Right. I was like, I can't be the Jeep guy. If he's the Jeep guy. Yeah. So I did that, you know, for a while and it was, it wasn't bad. And then I was like, I've always been able to build things. I've always, I, I come from a, uh, a background of like engineers and doctors and stuff like that. My, my dad's side of the family, even my mom's. And I was like, you know what? I I had this conversation with my wife. I'm like, do you think we can survive on like just your VA disability? Mm -hmm. She's like, no. (laughs) I'm like, could we make it work maybe for a little while? Like just in case I fail at, uh, you know, doing this on my own. Uh She's like, maybe, you know, like this is scary. Yeah. Right. Like (laughs) it's all on me. (laughs) Yeah. How many kids do you have at this point? Uh, at that point we had my oldest daughter and we had, we had two and we were pregnant. Oh, wow. So even, yeah. I mean, that's a whole whole new level of scary. Yeah. So we just kind of like said, you know what, let's do it. You know, if we're going to do it, this is the best time to, to pull, pull the trigger and, and attempt it. And I was like, all right, let's figure it out. And I started with small jobs. And I, I think my first custom like bathroom remodel I did on my own, I think when I was all said and done, I made like like $2 an hour. <laughs> That's usually how it goes <laughs> at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> and I look, it, it may, you know, maybe, maybe. Like yeah. it, you probably lost money, let's I be probably, honest. <laughs> yeah, I probably did the job for free. <laughs> and I look at that bathroom now and everything that it took to get that bathroom it was a small bathroom which people crack me up they're like oh it's a small bathroom i'm like uh-huh. so how many people can i fit in that small bathroom <laughs> so it's going to take twice as long okay yeah uh-huh mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but uh no i had to redo like the joists under the house were rotting like it was just oh, an goodness. absolute disaster but i ended up getting it all together and i look at it and i'm like man what i charge for that job now is like it's outrageous. I can't believe yeah. I, that's where I started. Yeah. But Well, it's part of the learning experience because you can't go in there on your first first real job and be like, hey, this is going to cost you 3000 bucks an hour. Yeah. You're still learning. I think my quality of work is still the same. I just know my worth. Ah, that's true. Yep. You know, I just know my worth now and I see what other people do and I'm like, huh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what what made you what made you go the remodeling route? Um I I think that it's like I don't know, my inner want for a challenge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's like um what is it? Glutton for punishment kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, let's go take on this project that 14 other people have probably touched in its life and Mm -hmm. who knows what's behind those walls. (laughs) Let's Uh, make it a 15th. Yeah. It's just wild. But, um, no, I think really it's, I like to change. I I like to have an impact on people. Right. Mm -hmm. So somebody who can afford to just go and buy a piece of property and build a house. I'm like, cool. You built a house. Yeah, you've got everything exactly as you want it, right? Yeah, you got it just how you want it. It, You start out that way, and that is what it is. I get to take something where, let's say this family's lived in this house for, you know, 30 years. They raised their family, they raised their kids there, and then the kids moved out, and now they're in this house, and they want to finally do something with the house. And the house has just been a house for X number of years. It was a home, and the kids left. Now it's just a house. Mm -hmm. It's just where they're at. I get to go in and I get to take like a space that's no longer functional for them and I get to change it. I get to take this bathroom mm. and knock down walls or whatever and make this gorgeous, you know, whatever it is 
and make them love their house again and make them feel like it's a home again. And that right there is why I do this because that's cool. You know, anybody mm. can just go build a house. Uh, not anybody can go and, and create an emotional feeling like that in a, from a space that these people have already been in for X yeah. number of years or whatever. So I don't know. I think that that's kind of cool. And I don't, and I always tell people, I'm like, I don't have to do this. I'm a, I'm a pretty well-rounded person and I've, I can go do many other things. I choose to do this because of that. Mm. You know? I I was going to say you are, I go buy a new house or I build a house. Uh, I might, I might use the phrase, I love this house, but, but I haven't spent time in it. I haven't grown a family in it. I don't have yeah. memories in it. Um, I like what it is, but I, there isn't that intense emotional connection that comes over time. Yeah. And, but here you, here you come saying, we've been in this house for 10 years, 15 years. This, this doesn't work for us anymore. We need something. Or I've always felt bad about my kitchen. Or I don't have kids. Or we are having kids and we need something mm -hmm. um, that works with three kids as opposed to just two of us. And you get to come in and you get to say, You're, you get to stay in your home. All of this place of all these memories, this place of emotional connection. Yes. And now... You, you get to experience it in a way that's even better. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very cool. I mean, and, you know, when you have somebody like, you know, like cry, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're like, well, <laughs> like kind of takes you back. You're like, I either did something really good or really bad right now. I'm like, I yeah. don't know what I did. A I'm few, just going to wait this out. A few seconds anything. of applause to see what, what, what words come out next. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. I've only had that happen a couple of times, but. Still, I mean, I, and my customers, you know, I, I've gotten to a point where I can kind of like, I don't want to say it in a bad way, but I like, I can pick and choose my customers. Right. Mm -hmm. So most of my customers have been, um, uh, they, they kind of become connected. They're like, they're like family, mm -hmm. you know, yep. you spend a couple of weeks in someone's house, you know, like their dog every day, you, you know, greets you. Then when you're not there, you're like, oh, man, I miss their dog, you know, or whatever it is. And so a lot of times um, customers, you know, they you kind of become attached to them and you become like the go-to they call you for stuff. You know, I've got a couple yeah. of customers like that, and it's great. I I love it. Um, it's funny that, you, that you're talking about the becoming part of the family because I had uh, my brother and his wife were looking to get their floors redone. And I was like, oh, I, I've, I, I know a guy, husband of, of one of my friends and connected them and um, came in. He did the floor. And next thing I know, Matt and Derek are out fishing every day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Musky fishing. They've got like sharing pictures like, oh, I'm going out with Derek. I'm going out with Derek. Like th they're constantly texting each other about fishing. Like, the And that's been... That was probably like a year and a half ago. Like, yeah, th they've got a closer relationship than than me and my brother do, and it's, it's just because it, and because of that, like yep. you come in and you you do a great job, and people are happy, and then turns out you're also a good human on top of that, and you just become part of the family. Yeah, I have like morals and ethics, and I'm trying to bring that back to the career <laughs> field. You know, like like I'm the person like, oh, okay, if there was something wrong with whatever and you call me and it's three o'clock in the morning, you better believe I'm a third on jeans and I'm going to show up at your house and I'm going to take care of whatever it is. Mm -hmm. That's just how I am. I just don't know how not to do that. Right. It's my wife loves it, but she hates it too. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll tell you, Cause I'm like, Nope, we're going to do it right. No matter how or what it costs, we just do it right. So, um, so there's that. I don't know. We were talking but, earlier before recording and we've, we've kind of alluded to your kids. How yeah. many kids? How many kids do you have? I officially have four kids. Four kids. Official ages. Um, the oldest is eleven, so um, I have her from a previous marriage, um, and I have I have her full time. So, um, and then what's spread under? And then under that? six year old going on seven. So. Yeah, what, what month is it? <laughs> I swear, I need to have their, I'm going to get their all their birthdays tattooed on me. So whenever I go to the pharmacy yes. and they ask me, I'm like, mm, let me think. Yeah, yeah, I have three and I'm like, don't judge me. 
don't, I'm a tired dad. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I think but, it's uh, June. <laughs> so 11, six, three, and nine months. Wow. <laughs> what, so. <laughs> what's, um, I'm, I, I have a five-year-old and I have two, almost two-year-olds. What, what advice would you give to me as a fellow dad? <laughs> the oldest is five? Yeah. Oh, man. Um, consistency. Tell me more about that. Um, having a routine, right? Which, I mean, I know, like, even as parents, like, we know that. Mm -hmm. Like, having a routine, consistency is, like, key. Yeah. But it's not always easy to, to do, right? True. Um, but it is very much a, a, a necessity for the kids. Um, I think having a routine and consistency and, um, socialization, mm. you know, uh, my wife's stay at home mom and she, <laughs> so being able to have the kids socialize with other kids, I think helps grow them into, being able to be social, right? Mm -hmm. Not growing up with having social anxieties and not having those things. Um, when COVID hit my now six-year-old, you know, she, there was a time frame where it was like, you know, everybody has to be in a little bubble and yeah, she could, right. she wouldn't and couldn't go out and be social with other kids. And it really like had an effect on who I think who she is now. Yeah. Especially at that young, young age where the brain is growing so fast oh, yeah. and every, like everything in the environment is, um, affecting or changing or they're learning from. And then you take away knowing people outside of your family. And, yep. it, you know. and so like, yeah, she's real mellow and shy and kept. And then the three year old is not, <laughs> uh, I, so they're all, I have all girls, but I say the three year old is my boy. Is, yeah. is how we put that because, <laughs> She's wild. She's yeah. like the one that's jumping off the top of the couch, giving the people's elbow to the <laughs> to the other ones. You know, she's nuts and she's social and she's she's just wild. And that's I I know every kid like, you know, the personalities are all different, but I think it's 100 percent environmental. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just, you know, things that have been environmentally things that are going on with the world at the time or whatever. I think that had a lot to do with yeah. it. Yeah. But she's nuts. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm always checked um, w with what you said about uh, consistency whenever I'm there's a day and I'm feeling tired and the kids are, are, are a mess and all I want to do is, is go to sleep right now. <laughs> yeah. And so I'll take Evelyn to bed and um, I'll, part of our, our routine is we read a book before you go to bed. And some sometimes I'm just like, I, I cannot even muster the strength to read this book right now. And so I'll say, Hey, well, how about we just, how about we just cuddle for a little bit and then I'll tuck you in and then we'll go. And it's like her world falls apart. Like, dad, you have yes. to read me a book. Like you have to read me a book. And she's just aghast that I would even consider destroying this routine. And <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a good reminder to me that um, regardless of my, perspective of it in that moment like it's another thing to do I don't have the energy I have a thousand other things I need to do et cetera, et cetera. regardless of my perspective to her it's important like yeah. at this moment is important it's important that we that we keep this it's a sign of the relationship being healthy all of those things it's structure all, yep. and um I I w without fail like if I stick to my guns and like oh we'll, we'll read two tomorrow I go to bed and then I'm like, you know what? It would have taken you five minutes to read that book, dude. <laughs> like, yeah, dude, you were dude. tired. Yeah. But you, guess what? Yeah. If you read it, you would still be tired. You wouldn't be more tired. <laughs> I know. I know. And then nine times out of ten, I'm wasting that five minutes doing something I, I I didn't need to be doing, and I did need to read that to her. And so I think sometimes the the routine and the structure, it's just as important for us as parents. Um. Because it, it's a way to hold us accountable to that, like like going to the gym. I, if I'm going to work out three times a week, I got to go to the gym at the same time, same day. Because when I wake up on Wednesday and I don't want to go, that structure almost holds you to say, no, if I, if I break it today, mm -hmm. 
tomorrow is off, Friday's off, and then next thing you know, I'm four years into completely avoiding any kind of physical activity. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks, yes. kids. No. <laughs> That's no, my I fault, though. It. Yeah, so the structure, I think, is important for us, too. Oh, yeah. Um, what? yeah the thousand things you got to do are still going to be a thousand things <laughs> yeah. after. Right. It's not going to change. What? What's What's an important lesson that you're kids have taught you oh patience <laughs> is that why you have patience oh. tattooed on your arm you know this was actually a um it was a reminder um had nothing to do with my kids tell me about it um so it's patience understanding and compromise Right. These oh, were interesting. These are some uh, marriage things, right? These are things that I felt um, were necessities of a healthy marriage. And these are things that I knew that I needed to work on. Um, there are more things that since then I, I would love to add. I just, yeah. I don't have the time. You're just going to have like a running list. I don't though. have the time. <laughs> yeah. You know, like empathy. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's something I struggle with because I'm like, I don't understand what you don't understand. <laughs> this right. is the problem. This is the solution and do it. I'm like, yeah, but that's my military brain. I was just going to say it. And I have a hard time with empathy with things sometimes because of that. Yeah. And, yeah. Mil uh, military background, but also like part of your experience, likely growing up in California where it's just, you got, we have a problem. We have to fix it. We have to yeah. work hard. And working hard and fixing the problem is the way forward. And so you kind of take that approach to other people's problems. And yes. Sometimes works and sometimes gets you in trouble. <laughs> Very much so. Sorry, Very wives. So. Here's a public apology from us yep. to you. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, That's cool, though. Like like having a having a written reminder. This you... was my... So the, way, the military standard for tattoos has changed. But uh, before um, our... Our standard was like 25% of the exposed body in any uni any uniform combination, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This was my cutoff line. Oh, So I yeah. could go from there up. That's why it ended up there. Okay. And then since then, the rules changed, and I just said, let's go for it. Awesome. So that's the arm started getting. Do those have meanings as well, or are they just cool? Or um, I got my girls in, like, initials in, or their oh, cool. stuff in here, but... Not really. See, that's where I want my, to start my tattoo journey is some homage to my girls. My thought process behind a tattoo, and <laughs> my wife would love this, but um, it's either you either put something on you because it's forever, right? That means something mm -hmm. in such a deep way that you'll never regret it. Right. Or means nothing in such a deep way that you'll never regret <laughs> it. You know what I mean? That's fair. Like there is no in between. Yeah. Otherwise you're gonna be like, oh, I really wish I hadn't, or I wish I Yeah. No. That you don't want to have that on something that's permanent forever. Yeah. So. Three three years later you're not friends with that person or relationship hmm. with that person. Hmm. Or <laughs> yeah. Like you don't go get a bunch of best friend tattoos right before you leave for boot camp. Yeah. Right. Because you might not be best friendies with them after boot camp. <laughs> and then it's just an awkward story when people are like, Hey, mm -hmm. do you does that tattoo mean something? Well, it did once, it but did no. Once. Yeah, my <laughs> wife is probably at home going, I hate you right now. <laughs> but that's fine. And I hope any of her once friends see this and they go, I also hate you right now. <laughs> and that's perfectly okay with me. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, something I wanted to say when I was here. So, yes, please. So I noticed you drive a Jeep, mm -hmm. right? Do you do you get the seven slot thing? No, you know tell me about is? that. No. Okay, so it's a Jeep thing. So every Jeep has a seven slot grill. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Welcome to the Jeep community. Yeah. Now, now you're now you're actually. See, Jeep I person. thought it was just all about the ducks and stuff and the wave. Oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> I gotta tell you, the duck thing. I get it. I think the duck thing was started by a guy in Canada. Oh really? Yeah. Um. And like the naming of Jeeps, oh, that drives me bananas. But uh, because when I grew up and off roading and wheeling and like like really wheeling, like I've had Jeeps lay on their side. I've been oh, flipped wow. over in them. I've done Intense. dumb things. Yeah. Um, we get our Jeeps get named after 
after like like you don't name them, right? It's like a call sign in the military. You can't yeah. give yourself the call sign. Like giving, giving yourself a nickname. Yeah. Like, my name's Phil, but you can call me Duke. Yeah. Like, that's, no. <laughs> that doesn't fly. That's exactly how I feel about the Jeep naming thing. Um, it's normally something that's deemed from something that happens on a trail or, you know, yeah. whatever it be. Uh-huh. Um, and usually someone else gives names your Jeep. So whenever I see all these Jeeps with their names on them, I'm like, oh. yeah, it's just such a different Jeep community now. But yeah. it's fine. It's whatever. Yeah, I it's do, kept I, the brand alive. Yeah, I think I do. Kind of like I. I do kind of like the community. I. I love the little ducks. Like you, <laughs> you come out of yeah. wherever you're at, and there's a little duck on your jeep. I'm like, oh, that's nice. That's nice. Somebody's thinking about me. Yeah. Yeah. My I've I've been told my jeep doesn't count though because it's electric. Uh, yeah. Well. <laughs> go go get it dirty. <laughs> go wheel it. Like for real, wheel it, yeah, and then you can shove it in like ninety percent of the Jeep owners' face. And be like, you don't even do anything yeah. with your. Jeep. Where would where would you go in Michigan to 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 for real Jeep UP? Uh, yeah, so we sold our Wrangler. I don't know, like a year and a half ago, maybe, because it was basically sitting advertisement. It was a really expensive piece of rolling advertisement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it was built like a rock crawler. It was not built like uh, mommy's Jeep or oh, mm-hmm. it's got a little lift. It was built to go be beaten on. Yeah. And every Jeep, to include yours, can go and wheel, like, in a way that you just don't even have a clue. Like, I've seen stock Jeeps go up things and down things that would just make you go, oh, my God, that's a lot of money. (laughs) (laughs) Like, the whole time. The whole yeah. time you're just like, uh, <laughs> that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Bad decisions. I'm making yeah. bad decisions. But, you know, that's what they're made for. That's what they were built for. So huh. um, we took, uh, I wheeled all over the country, but I never did a jamboree. And so uh-huh. a couple of years back, my wife, that was our Christmas present. Like it was like a family thing. You know, cool. we went and did a Jeep jamboree, which is in UP yep. at Drummond Island, which was, it wasn't bad. It wasn't as... You were looking for something more intense? I was looking for something yeah. a lot more intense. There were guys out there with easily had $100,000 buried into these rigs. And I was out there with this 20, I mean, maybe I might have had 25 grand into this this Jeep. I bought it on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. <laughs> I got it on Wish and I still outwheeled you guys, you know? Like it. Yeah. it's more about the driver and, and your ballsiness and knowing what your vehicle can do. And then, so we went out there and we wheeled these guys and it was pretty, I mean, it was fun. But yeah, Drummond Island's probably your the only place I know that's got a lot of rocks and stuff. Okay. Okay. But cool. Yeah. Um, but before we wrap this up, we, we should do a we a one oh one of exactly what you do at seven slot. We talked about remodeling. Yeah. But talk talk to me like, hey, I'm interested in seven slot. Josh, what exactly <laughs> do you do? So give me do the one oh one. Um I pretty much do everything. I we do we tend to do a lot of we do a lot of kitchens, right? So like full guts on kitchens, um, bathrooms, you know the everything, pretty much everything that's going to be entailed in that. Um, I do a lot of tile work because if I'm going to do this stuff, I think the artistic fun side of it is in tile. Mm, um, so I like to do that. That tile is a lot of fun. And there's not a lot of, well, there are, there's a lot of people that can make a tile stick to something. Mm-hmm. Um, there's I, not a lot I'd of I'd be people, one of them. <laughs> yeah. You know, bubble gum and some super glue and yeah. I made it stick. Yeah. But I want one with like a peel, peel backside where I can just like slap oh, it on. Please the, don't. On the, <laughs> please don't. Look, look, Steph, I, I made us a backsplash. <laughs> yeah. Which, I mean, that's fine. That stuff's out there and it sells for yeah. a reason. I just, yeah, you I just want to take it. I could never do it. Yeah, you want to <laughs> take it to the next level. Yeah, um, but you know, uh, so we do a lot of custom tile work. Um, tile is kind of my my niche, I guess. You Very know, cool. um, a lot of flooring. You know, whether it be like vinyl planking or you know tile floor, we do a lot of that. Very cool. Um, it's funny. I get calls for drywall. Like, hey, we have a hole in our drywall. Can you come repair this? I'm like, that is, the juice is not worth the squeeze here. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm not, I'm not a handyman. 
go to Home but, Depot. Yeah. But let me point you in the direction of a handyman, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so custom kitchens, custom bathrooms. I mean, a lot of custom flooring, that kind of stuff. Custom mm-hmm. tile work. Okay. It's kind of been where, what I've done a lot of, um, I can do a lot. Things I don't touch. I don't touch roofing. <laughs> mm. It's weird. You fall off a roof one time, <laughs> and then your wife doesn't let you go up there anymore. I don't know why. You have four kids at home. Yeah, you yeah. stay off that roof. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. so yeah, that and insurance, re- insurance wise, you know, I don't mind insured for playing on roofs. Right, that's yeah. kind of a big yeah. deal. Let's you know. keep Josh intact. Yep. Um, so, so if people are listening to this and they they want to check out your work, are you on social media at um, all? Yeah. So if website, you, if you look us up on Facebook or even on Google, um, I, there's a lot of reviews and a lot of pictures and a lot of stuff on Google. Cool. Seven As slot remodeling, seven, Bay City, probably. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Actually, I think if you just look up seven slot remodeling, it's the only one that'll pop up. Oh, really? Okay. Cool. So. Awesome. But, um, yeah, that's us. We just try to bring morals and ethics back to the game of uh, of construction-y stuff. Yay! So. You. Well, Josh, I want to thank you so much for, for swinging by, sharing your story, for the work yeah. that you're doing also in Bay City and um, yeah. supporting other people and making their homes exactly what they want. So I, I appreciate you. I appreciate your wife, Molly, <laughs> for, for giving you a shout out and connecting us. So thanks so much, dude. Yeah. Absolutely. Cut. Sweet. (laughs) You're awesome.